Okay, I cut up the Crisco and now I'm cutting up the margarine into smaller pieces. Then I'm gonna use this important tool, which is a pastry cutter, and I'm just going up and down. And then I scrape it out. I'm basically just aiming for the big pieces and smushing the cutter through them. edge of the cutter, kind of stir it around and bring the big pieces up to the top. And you don't want to make the pieces very small. You want it to be lumpy like peas. Like that. Thank you, Carter. <laughs> I wasn't filming. Start over. Go. I have a tablespoon of cider vinegar in here and I have ice water. This is a third cup measure. I'm just gonna dilute that vinegar up to a third and sprinkle it around. And then I'm gonna take just a regular fork and toss it. I'm not stirring it, I'm tossing it to get it moist. I'll just get that vinegar moisture spread throughout. And then I'm gonna do another third of a cup of ice water. And toss that in there, and again, I'm not really stirring, I'm cutting with the fork and tossing. If you stir, it means it makes the little lumps of butter and Crisco blend in in a way that you don't really want, because they're the things that make the, um, the flakiness in the crust. So when those lumps uh, melt in the oven, and then they make air pockets. So I'm just kind of chopping them in. Then I'm going to get some plastic wrap out. And I haven't totally mixed it all in, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wettest part out and make, I'm going to make two lumps out of this. And the wettest one I'll get, get out of there into a nice ball. So I'm just going to take the parts that are going to ball up easily and squish them into a ball. Oh, it's still sort of too wet, too dry. So I'm gonna add some more water. This is the part where judgment is involved. So I'm adding more water. And it just depends on the weather and the moisture content in your flour. There's just really no exact measurement for how much water, it's just how. So I'm gonna grab it and see if I can make it into a, yeah, I can press this into a loose, a loose patty and that's what I'm going to do. I'm just pressing it into a patty and I'm going to put that there and it's okay if it's a little crumbly. This part is probably still too crumbly because the bottom, the, the dry parts go to the bottom and so I've taken some of the wet parts out. I've added a tablespoon at a time of ice water and honestly that one tablespoon is probably enough to get this to hang together. So you only you only do the vinegar on the first. Yeah, because you one. really only need a tablespoon of vinegar in the whole thing. Okay, so then water to, to get water it to, to stick, get it to it stick together. together, right? So now that's sticking together really nicely in a patty. So I have two patties, and then I'm gonna refrigerate those for at least half an hour, and um, basically as long as it takes me to prepare the filling and then I'll um, unwrap them and roll them out. No, that will be the next step. So I just do that. Whoops, go back in there and put that in the fridge, that's all. Okay, so now I've laid plastic wrap down on the table and because my plastic wrap is narrower than I want my crust to be, I have two lengths of it overlapped by about that much and I've pressed it together there really nicely. And then I'm gonna sprinkle it with, um, this rice flour. I like this Mochico sweet rice flour. It comes from California and it's very fine. And I sprinkle the surface with that and then I'm going to get my dough. Okay, so I'm going to unwrap my dough and I'm going to take one of the cylinders and put it right in the middle here. And I'm going to sort of squish it together. It's a little crumbly, but that is a okay. 
Okay, then I'm gonna press it down with the heel of my hand to make it a little flatter. And then I'm gonna sprinkle it with more mochiko. And I'm gonna move it around so that the bottom of it gets sprinkled with mochiko and then I can replace the mochiko where it, um, it had stuck onto the roll. So then I'm gonna take my rolling pin and I'm gonna um, press it down, press it down, press it down like this, just to get started with flattening it out. And then I'm gonna, I don't do a whole lot, I don't do back and forth rolling at all. I only ever go in one direction. I go down and out, down and out. And I'm doing this with one hand because I'm also holding the camera because my camera people left me. As you can see, it got a little sticky, get a little sticky, add some more flour. Scrape the sticky bits off of the rolling pin. Put them to the side. Okay. Oh, but do you know what? I'm forgetting something. Usually I put plastic wrap on top. Okay, so I'm now gonna... I have plastic wrap between my roller and my dough and that that will eliminate the sticking problem. So I'm just gonna move that piece of plastic wrap around a little bit. So there's a crack. I roll across the crack in the opposite direction. So I'm just finding the flat, the fat places and flattening them out. And where the edges are crumbly, I move the plastic wrap over the edge like that. And then I'm gonna go across it like this. And that just helps um, gather that uh, dough into a more cohesive bit. Um, so it's not breaking into cracks while I'm rolling it out. So I move the plastic. I'm going to feel it because you can really feel where it's thicker and where it's thinner. So I find the thicker places and I roll from the middle outwards and then I roll along the edges. So I'm not going I'm just moving it. I'm just coaxing it really. I'm coaxing it outwards and moving across the bits and that's because I don't want to flatten out and lose these clumps of fat see that's margarine those are nice big clumps of margarine and that is going to be what makes um, makes the flaky crust okay so it's getting to be fairly reasonably circular and I'm going to run my hands around on it uh oh so at my house, I have um, restaurant style um, plastic wrap that's the full, that's much wider. And so I have a full piece that I don't have to keep moving around and it's the whole width. This one I'm moving around and that's just means that I'm gonna have some loose edges and that's no big deal. I'm gonna piece them together and it totally can handle that. Um, it doesn't uh, inhibit the integrity of the crust as a crust to eat. Okay, so now I'm gonna transfer it. What I wanna do is lay the plastic long ways across the most of the dough. And I'm gonna ask Carter to come and help me because I need his help because I have to do it this with two hands. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll this onto the, onto the rolling pin and peel away the back but I'm gonna first lift this so that I'm using it to roll it onto the rolling pin. And then I'm gonna peel that back and I'm gonna use this. This will help stay, keep it together. So Carter, I'm gonna need your help. Tell me when you're ready. I'm ready. Okay, is it filming? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna use this hand to lift it up and over and I'm using this hand to hold the pin and then I'm gonna put my thumb right there. Can you see what I'm doing with the camera? And I'm gonna just help lift this away from that plastic underneath and I'm gonna put the pan there. So I'm holding this up and I'm using my thumb to keep the rolling pin from rolling. And I'm just gonna lay it back down and pull it into place into my pan and then this plastic pulls away. And rot row, I have a little problem. I didn't move it over enough, but guess what? It's totally fine to piece and patch it. It will patch together beautifully. Okay, that's all you have to film. Okay, now I'm lifting up the edges and allowing the crust to drop the movie.
the drop down into the edges so that it's not stretching, it's resting down into the edges of the pan. And you can see it's kind of sloppy and that's okay. If this is a single crust pie, I'm gonna fold these edges under and crimp them. But because it's a double crust pie, I'm just gonna set it aside while I roll my top out. If it's really warm in your kitchen, set that in your fridge. If it's cool in your kitchen, you can just leave it on the counter while you're um, rolling out the other half. Before I get the next piece on here, I, I'm gonna shake off the bits of dough that are stuck to it and add more rice flour. And then I'm gonna get my other disc of dough. And this is more dough than is needed for a two-part two pie, but I'm gonna roll it out big and then cut away the extra um, rather than risk rolling it out too small. So this is enough dough for this big, big pie and another small single pie crust. Um, okay, I have to use one hand. I have to use two hands. You doing it? Yeah. Okay, so I'm doing the thing again where I have the disc of dough and I'm pressing down on it. And then I'm gonna lift this up because it's a little sticky and add some more flour. I'm using the flour. Are you, don't move around so much, it's gonna make her dizzy. Sure. Okay, so then I'm gonna go from middle and out, middle and out, middle and out, middle and out. And I'm finding the thick places in the edge and whacking my thing down right there. Middle and out. And see so I'm gonna move this. And spread that out. And then I'm gonna move it over here. I'm gonna spread this together so that that crack is gone. Are you get help for how to make a pie? Yeah, Dia wants to know how to make pie, so I'm making this movie for her. So uh, I rolled why, it out pretty why thin. Why didn't you just tell her how to make pie? Well, because she's in California and I'm here. And um, I didn't get to show her while she was here. So I'm going to do this so she can watch it. And anytime I didn't when get she's to see ready, her this time. I know. It's disappointing. You could talk to her right now while I'm doing this part. <laughs> okay. So now this is pretty thin. Well, I saw Drew and... Uh... Oh, yeah. You got to play golf. I didn't get to see Drew. I saw <laughs> Cynthia and you saw Drew. Okay, I have my filling here, and I'm going to pour it into this pie pan. This is peach with res with uh, blackberry. I added some sugar, some lemon juice, and minute tapioca. That's the key for using, for making berry pies that stand up. And that's just about the right amount. Spread those blackberries around a little bit. Rinse off my fingers. Then, oh no, pick it up, it's time. Now it's time, are you filming? Yeah. Okay, now it's time to do the rolling over. So I'm gonna roll this over like this. I'm holding this. I lift off the bottom piece of plastic. I'm holding my thumb there to keep it from rolling. I'm gonna lift this up and drape it across. Ta-da! And then I'm gonna use a little knife and go around the edge like this. Don't cut yourself. Yeah, I'm really accident prone, so Carter's very careful to have me watch out. So all of that crust that I've pulled away can get re-rolled into Pop-Tarts or into a small dish. A, a, you're moving it around so much, Carter. <laughs> or into a crostini. So I'm gonna set that aside for a sec. Here's my pie. I'm gonna cut some actual big holes in. I'm gonna cut things away rather than just doing a slit because this crust will just close up a slit and then it won't do its job, which is to let the steam out. So I just cut little, little leaf shapes or little slits. And then the edge, watch carefully, I'm gonna fold the edge under and pinch together the two layers of crust. So I'm kind of rolling it under and pinching it. And this is gonna have a nice, thick, rustic crust on it. Um, sometimes if I was trying to make that into a whole pie and stretch it, I would make this much thinner and save some of that dough to go in my other crust, but I'm just going to make a pop tart out of that. So this is okay to have a thick crust. And then my oven is at 425. I'm going to bake the pie for 425 for about 18 minutes. And then that will get the crust browning. And I put a ring around this crust to cover it up while the rest of the baking is happening. This little piece of crust is a little light, so I'm adding some more. Now I'm gonna take my, my knuckle and I push my knuckle in to my two pinchy fingers, and that's gonna get the crimp. 
knuckle, knuckle. Sometimes if it's close, I use my finger, but I like my knuckle better. Knuckle, knuckle. And I'm just kind of pressing it down and cleaning it up on the edge with my fingertips, just so um, it doesn't have a sharp edge because a sharp edge will burn faster than a rounded edge. And so I'm doing my best to keep the filling in when it gets all hot and bubbly. Sometimes you just can't help the filling spilling out. And that's why when we put it in the oven, we put it on a cookie sheet so that the filling doesn't spill out into your oven and make terrible burning smells. Okay, so the last step is I'm just gonna get a little spoonful of sugar and sprinkle it on there to get a little bit of sugar crystal crust. If you have large crystal sugar, that's even better. Um, like that. Then I'm gonna put it on, in this case, a pizza pan and put it in my 425 degree oven. Time it for 18 minutes. And then I'm gonna turn it down to 350 for about 40 minutes and then it will be ready. Okay, it says 415, but it's working on 425. If you have convection, do it at conve do it convection um, 420. That works great too. Okay, thanks Carter. Hey, can you give us a wave? <laughs> okay, so here's how I protected it in the oven when I didn't have my specialty tools. I just made a piece of tin foil, crimped the edges a little bit made some holes in the middle and laid over there for the last 25 minutes of baking. You can see it spilled over a little bit. It's bubbling. I know it's done because it's nice and crispy and the center is boiling. So that'll get the center to thicken up. The juices in the center to thicken up and the peaches will be fall cooked and the edges didn't get burned. There it is.